next next is again uh, dr rohit manoj he is enjoying uh, in in his uh, native village and where he doesn't have a good uh, network coverage and uh, again i would have to request one of the faculty to you know answer the queries in case we have after his talk so we are going to run again uh, his pre recorded talk uh, uh, please go ahead Good afternoon. The second talk of my uh, this meeting is uh, transformation of great arteries. Uh, I think the uh, the theme of this meeting is echocardiography in uh, congenital heart disease. So uh, it's a, a rather long topic in the TGA. So I have the TGA are two types: DTGA, what is called transformation of great arteries, and what is called LTGA or what is called congenital carotid TGA. Because of the time limitation, I have limited myself. to the uh, transposition of great arteries or dtga so i will limit my talk talk to the uh, transposition of great arteries so we all know uh, that normal connection is that left ventricle uh, empties into the aorta and the uh, right ventricle empties into pulmonary that is normal connection and so what happens in tga the left ventricle la opens into the left ventricle and the left ventricle opens into the pulmonary artery so basically ventricular arterial discordance happens uh, so that's how the transposition of the artery is and the dtga is in approximately 5% of all congenital heart defects it's predominantly seen in the male inf infant it's a rarely associated with the chromosomal abnormalities unlike the congenital uh, anomalies however associated with the, it could be associated with the heterodoxy syndrome uh, there are some uh, series which suggest the presentation diabetes metal intake of high dose of vitamin brofen influenza could be increased risk is there the two main proposed theories for embryologic basis of developing a transposition great artery is one is a straight coronal septal theory It proposes that there is a lack of spiral rotation of the aortic copulmonary septum and the second thing is differential coronal development theory where subaortic conus enlarges while the subpulmonary conus is reabsorbed results in a transposition of great arteries so uh, as i said the this uh, that is called l loop and what is called a d loop in a d loop we expect the patient uh, to have a uh, r uh, rv opening into the aorta and the lv opening into the pulmonary artery in l loop uh, there are uh, atria ventricular discordance ventricular artery discordance is there so you can see that uh, the in this uh, schematic diagram that uh, this uh, so, the uh, in uh, transposition great arteries deoxygenated blood from ra rv enters into the aorta so unless there is a mixing is there uh, survival is next to impossible and for survival patient has to have a mixing between the two parallel circuit and that's generally either asd vsd or pda is there so patient has to have a large asd vsd for a good or better survival is there in the newborn presence of foramen oval and ductal arteries is expected and as such these two are not considered associated lesion various types of vsd has been described and a complex uh, tgs can be associated with the uh, arch anomalies while a simple perivenous vsd double recurrent subarterial vsd or with inlet or muscular uh, vsd various vsd has been described and all uh, quite common uh, is uh, to have a large vsd the uh, large vsd allows good mixing in such uh, tender the second thing we need to define in our tga is the coronary artery anomalies because we have to switch the aorta and pulmonary artery we will discuss that in uh, surgery and uh, various types of anomalies are described the typical pattern would be that we have opposite facing sinus coronary artery give rise to there you can see this sinus give rise to left system and opposite sinus give rise to rc the various single coronary artery or the various anomalies are there it is important and good to know good to diagnose and good to inform the surgeon uh, to tell that there are the coronary anomalies are there and he can take bit more precaution and warning however a good center good surgeon is less bothered over the diagnosis of coronary he opens and he may manage 
and able to handle most of the coronary without your, even your diagnosis. So presentation it depends on anatomical detail. If the patient has intact septum, it will be cyanosis in immediate and it will be crisis. Child will come with a cyanosis with shock. On the other hand, if the patient has a large VST, it is difficult to sometimes differentiate from the VST except the fact that the patient has heart failure with a cyanosis is there. And the patient has a, a TGA with a LV after obstruction, then it will behave like simply like a tetrage of fellow or what is called top physiology is there. Patient could often be having a reverse different cyanosis that depends on uh, what is the patient interpretary arch coarctation with severe P, uh, uh, PPHN could behave like uh, uh, reverse differential cyanosis. So you can see the patient has a normal uh, equal saturation and pulmonary blood flow is uh, supplying the PDS, supply, supplying the descending aorta and hence the patient is having uh, differential cyanosis is there in such patient. ECG is particularly not diagnostic and we don't use ECG to diagnose the uh, PC, uh, diagnosis of the patient with the TGA. But as I told you in my previous presentation, ECG is extremely useful in a congenitally corrected TGA. Uh, congenitally corrected TGA is well known to produce AU block every year. In, in, the risk is incremental every year and it is good to get ECG in the view of your suspecting congenitally corrected TGA. Uh, X-ray is very agon side or agon string appearance is very clearly a diagnostic of such patients. Why echocardiography? Echocardiography is widely available, relatively inexpensive, portable and quite safe and it remains the main corner stop, uh, stone for diagnosing of TGA for giving to a lot of centers simply do echo and patient goes wills into the surgery or OT and does very well. But are there limitations? In a country like ours, where we often see delayed diagnosis, late presentation, then we are stuck with a sometimes a older patient, echo may not give you the accurate diagnosis. It is uh, in a small neonate or young infant, coronary and only easily diagnosed an echo, but in a grown up bigger children, they, we may not be able to see coronary very clearly because the acoustic window, window in a blue child in bigger becomes rather difficult. We are unable to define, suppose patient has a large VST, and we are unsure if patient develop severe pH and vascular resistance that cannot be decided on echocardiography, unfortunately. And we are quantity asymmetric vascular uh, regression could be uh, sometime difficult, but I would presume that this is a very uh, excellent tool to diagnosis. Of, uh. So when we so there are guidelines available uh, to when very operative preoperatively vital thing is atrial communication. We often have good PDA. But that PDA alone is not by mixing good. Atrial uh, septal communication and ventricular septal communication is quite important to diagnose the survival and better mixing is required. We also need to find out if the elevator outflow is very severe and it's uh, so that patient could be one of the contraindications or other relatively uh, changes your switch or surgery. Pulmonary stenosis is important. And we are, we rarely say aortic stenosis, but we could say subaortic membrane or something that is feasible. And coarctation of aorta, ductus arteriosus, and coronary artery are important to define this in post of further. There are so many things, but uh, all this. Uh, there are various views described. You whether if I can go to subjective view, in all the neonate and infant subjective view, frontal and sagittal, we give most of the information. And in grown up children, we get apical, parasol, suprasolar information will give a fairly good amount of information in this. In subjoid, uh, it is important to differentiate AST, pulmonary vein, relation of the pulmonary artery, and uh, short axis, we can see systemic pulmonary vein, atrium, AV valve, morphology, all this can be defined very clearly. You can see this very clearly that this is a normal uh, left ventricle, where you can see uh, the left ventricle empties into the aorta without the branching and the uh, right ventricle empties on the pulmonary crisscross. You can see how it is going like this and the pulmonary going crisscross. So this is a normal uh, pattern is there in this patient is there. On other hand, you can see this patient uh, with uh, this patient has a, a large uh, VST, right? You can see an aorta is arising from the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery is arising from uh, left ventricle. So there is a clearly what is, what is more important in this is uh, this patient is the patient has a severe pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary artery is small. This child is likely to behave like a top physiology. 
In the fourth chamber, we can see coronary sinus, aval regurgitation, orthotrach obstruction, seminal war, all cases can be omitted. In a parasol and long axis, we can see that VSD very clearly defined, you can see VSD, and you can see permatory is small, and this is a permatory arising from the left ventricle. So we know the diagnosis of TGA, VSD with the permanent stenosis is there. In the parasol and short axis, is very important to define the coronary artery anomaly. You can see this is the pulmonary artery and this is the uh, aorta. Entry posterior aorta is anterior and the PS posterior. You can see the coronary, this is the coronary artery branching pattern of the coronary artery. Very clearly delineated this echo and showing this thing. In the supra, uh, we, we basically see arch of uh, aorta and uh, PD. One could often use the supra view to uh, define the relation pulmonary artery and is there. You can see this uh, view. You can see this is aorta branching pattern. Very clearly, uh, there is no arch obstruction, and the, there is no PDA which we can sign on this uh, image. We normally don't use uh, cardiac catheterization in this uh, patient in the TGA. However, it is not necessary in the complex cases, undefined coronary or very late presentation, which is not uncommon in our children. MRI usually is not indicated. In case of late presentation without elevating MR control, useful information about left ventricle mass and function. Therapy of choice in such in children is a prostaglandin infusion. So, if you diagnose TGA, it is an emergency and must be referred to an urgent center where the prostaglandin infusion is given. And if there is an inadequate intercardiac mixing, then one needs to open up the foramen, balloon septosomy is required in such children. And the balloon atrial septosomy is life saving. Uh, and uh, the, the, despite the patient having PDA, if there is interceptum is intact and the AS is restrictive, the patient often develops acidosis. In, such a, in the case of restrictive ASD, balloon atrial septosomy is necessary, mandatory, and a life saving procedure. No sufficient improvement despite prostate infusion indicates that maxing, uh, mixing with the uh, parallel circuit is not good and we need to have balloon atrial septosomy. We could also use this procedure to uh, reduce or avoid a terminal prostate infusion uh, in such uh, children. And um, I'm sorry, I'm not able to do, play this window, but you can see that uh, the septum, uh, the balloon septum can be done eco guided, and then uh, a lot of centers, a lot of uh, physicians are quite comfortable and eco guided. Definite surgery TGA with intact septum artery switch surgery. And if you get delayed and a late presentation, all patient has a, a VST with LV2, Rasali surgery is required in this. In a Jatin switch surgery, preferred surgery, we basically switch the aorta and pulmonary interchangeably, and then they have a general good. Sanding or mustard operation is basically palliative surgery, and where the patient is present late presentation and LV is not trained, LV is not good, then we do atrial switch, and basically then have a uh, level of mustard and sanding operation is there. TG with uh, VST with LVO2 would demand a rastelli surgery, that is an RV repair conduit, would be required to uh, diagnose them. The word about tossing anomaly, this is a type of DORV, you can see here that the patient has aorta is primarily arising from the right ventricle and the pulmonary is overriding both aorta and LV or RV and you can see a large subordinate VSC is there. Uh, so this is a typical uh, interesting DORV subordinate VSC where we have completely behaves like TG physiology and of treatment also behaves like a they have a very high incidence of cooperation of aorta. Is that there in such patients? Thank you very much for your kind attention.